Number 24, complete and balance the following oxidation reduction reactions, which give the highest possible oxidation state for the oxidized atoms. Okay, and then we have letter B. So in this case, we're mixing together barium, which is a solid, it's a metal, plus a hydrobromic acid, right, which is aqueous. And hydrobromic acid, we should say, uh, hold the phone, right? I memorized my six strong acids. HBr is a strong acid. Remember, there's six strong acids and six strong bases. Um, definitely in previous videos, I went over the six strong acids and bases. So if you want a list, just go back to when it was an acid base question and I probably wrote, wrote it down, but this one, this is a strong acid, right? And strong acids and strong bases always are aqueous. They will always break up into their ions so readily because they're really reactive. Okay. So now let's see what the products are. So BA, barium which was a solid, is mixing with HBr, aqueous. And now we got to find out the products. Okay. Now, the key here is actually knowing what the ions are of HBr, right? Now, HBr, use those subscripts, right? There was one bromine and one hydrogen, actually. I said that reverse, but I think you, you get what I was trying to say. There's one hydrogen and one bromine. Use those subscripts to crisscross back up, right? This one told me that the bromine was a negative one charge. And remember, the negative goes in the back, uh, standard notation. And this one told me that hydrogen was a plus one. So I have hydrogen being a plus one and bromine being a minus one. And that makes sense. Hydrogen on my trend of oxidation states wants to be a plus one when it's a compound and bromine wants to be a negative one. So the trend is true. However, now we're adding barium to the mix. Now barium right now is a zero charge. Remember any atom that's by itself that is not stated otherwise is always a zero charge. Now, we're looking at this and we're saying, okay, what's going to happen here? What type of reaction is this? Well, yeah, it's an oxidation reduction reaction, right? But specifically, it's a single replacement. I know that it's a single replacement because I see one lonely atom by itself and a compound. If you see one lonely atom with a compound, it's automatically a single replacement. And these are kind of cool because... How I like to think of it is that the lonely atom, right, since it's lonely, it gets, it's, it's watching this compound from afar. It's watching its friends, right? It's watching hydrogen and bromine having a good time. And barium, you know, gets a little jealous. So barium is going to want to try to swoop in here and try to mingle with either hydrogen or bromine, right? Because barium wants to make its own compound but he can only choose one or she or they. <clears throat> so barium can either um, react with hydrogen or bromine. Now the answer lies in what the charge of barium wants to be when it makes a compound. Barium, which is in group two, when it makes a compound, wants to be a plus two charge. So barium is gonna wanna go from a zero to a plus two and it looks like it's becoming more positive, right? And whenever you go from a, a lower number to a higher number, right? If you're becoming more positive, that's oxidation. Oxidation is losing electrons. Electrons are negative. So if you're losing negatives, you're going to look like you're gaining positives right? You're going to look like you're becoming more positive. And that's what barium is doing. So this is the oxidized guy. Is that the highest possible oxidation state? Oh yeah, it is. Barium wants to lose a max of two electrons. That's the highest. So the highest possible state plus two. Now, since barium wants to be a plus, who is it going to kick out? 
Remember, you can't have two positives in a compound and you can't have two negatives. One of them has to be positive and the other one has to be negative. So if barium is going to be the positive, who is it going to mingle with? It's going to mingle with the bromine. It's going to kick out the hydrogen. So barium says, hey, bromine, let's go have a chat, right? Let's ditch hydrogen. Sounds really mean, but it's kind of easy to remember. So what's my compound now? Barium is going to hook up with a 2 plus, right? Barium is a 2 plus. And bromine is going to be the minus 1. Use those oxidation states to crisscross down to get the charges. This 2 tells me that I need 2 bromium, uh, two bromiums. I don't know why I keep saying bromium. <laughs> it just sounds nicer, I guess, right? Instead of bromine. And this 1 crisscrosses down telling me that I need 1 barium. That's probably why I keep saying bromium, because barium, bromine, uh, two Bs, getting me all mixed up, but we still got this. So this is the compound, right? Ba, Br, 2. Now what happened to little old hydrogen, right? Hydrogen is now all alone. Poor hydrogen. But however, is hydrogen going to be just H, or does it exist in a different way by itself? You're right. It exists as a diatomic, right? Hydrogen, when it's by itself, is always going to be a diatomic. Di means two in chem. Atomic, atom, atoms, right? So H would exist as H2. There's, I think, seven diatomics that you have to memorize, Elements, when they're by themselves, um, will be H2 or N2O2, F2. Those are your diatomics. So it's N2. If nitrogen is by itself, it's N2, not just N. If O is by itself, it's O2, F2. And then you go down. Cl2, Br2, and I2. If these elements are by themselves, they are a diatomic. These are the only ones. So I like to remember it as H, right? That's off to the side. And then I say NOF down. N-O-F, NOF, and down. Eh, whatever. Wh whatever makes you, you know, memorize it. Now, just know that hydrogen, when it's a diatomic, is always a gas, okay? And BABR2, barium bromide, um, that comes from your solubility rules of knowing if this is a aqueous or a solid. But if we go by our solubility rules, this would be aqueous. Halides, specifically bromine, right? Halides are mostly soluble, aka aqueous, unless they're grouped with a couple of atoms. And that's lead, that's mercury, and that's silver. Barium is not one of those. So it would be an aqueous compound. Now we just got a balance, right? Let's see. The first thing that I notice is that I have two bromines on my product side, and I only have one bromine on my reactant side. So what number am I going to put in the front here to get me to that two? Yeah, I'm going to put a two here, right? Two bromines, two bromines. So that checks out. Now let's see. I have two hydrogens. I got two hydrogens. So that checks out. And then I got one barium and one barium. So we're all good here. So this is your completed and balanced oxidation reduction reaction. Uh, and we gave barium the highest number. It was a plus two. And we're all good. That's the end, guys. What do you think? Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments what you thought. And I hope you guys are studying hard for your quizzes and tests or homeworks. But we'll be, you know, we'll be here every step of the way, my brother and myself, okay? So I hope you guys are having a great day, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. All right? Take care. Bye-bye.